Hi, welcome to this week's edition of the Swedish Startup Sessions and I'm here with Alex Johnson, CTO and co-founder of Mosync and we're going to talk about a lot about mobile development, uh, app development, music and the living quality in Sweden. So, stay tuned. This is Sweden. You ain't packing gas the way the heart. You ain't living in the garage. This is Sweden. Fly overseas. Claim you to achieve. Please believe. This ain't Sweden. Witness a massacre in Middle East or Africa. Bitch, you be thanking God. This is Sweden. Stop lying to all. You ain't struggling at all. This is Sweden. You ain't packing gas. You ain't hard. You ain't living in the garage. This is Sweden. Fly overseas. Claim you to achieve. Please believe. This ain't Sweden Witness a massacre In Middle East or Africa Bet you be thanking God This, this is the Swedish Startup Sessions Hi, welcome back to Swedish Startup Session And I'm here with Alex Johnson Who is the CTO of Mosink Tell us, tell me a little about yourself uh, Well, I'm I could be one of the uh, typical entrepreneurs However, I have uh, many other interests as well, and yeah. I uh, do a lot of music currently, and it's a good counterweight to uh, entrepreneurship and, and, and running. At the same time, uh, having many ideas, and one of the tricks with being an entrepreneur is actually to find one idea and, and stick to it. So I think it's one-third inspiration and two-thirds perspiration and stamina you need. Yeah. And you also have a rather prominent academic career. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's like you say in the academic world. Uh, it's about it's also about stamina, uh, getting a doctor's degree is more being able to do the same thing for four years. And, yeah. and in my case, I did the same thing for another four years. <laughs> uh, however, then then you have a route to to do research. You have yeah. a route to do uh, uh, be involved in education and. And then you have the third group, which is, of course, to take one of your ideas and bring the best people and, and go down and do yeah. something else. Yeah. And uh, oh, 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 also then, I, I've really done a little of both, yeah. actually. But, but this is where I spend most of my time. Yeah. In, in Sweden, we have, in, in the so-called innovation system, we have a rather heavy weight on, on commercializing research, and, and whereas Startup people like me, who's more having an idea and come from a non-academic background, have harder to get uh, support and funds and so on. And how do you see? Do you see that that a lot of the academic research are good ideas to to commercialize, or are they just you know good ideas in general, or not so good ideas? Well, I mean, uh, there, there's. I come from the Royal Institute of yeah. Technology, KTH, and, and, and there's there's so many good ideas there. Mm -hmm. However, being uh, an idea maker, an inventor, doesn't make you an entrepreneur. Really. No, exactly. And, and uh, what I think uh, is is one of the issues here, if you compare to to the US, mm -hmm. is that uh, as a teacher, or as a student, or as a researcher, you own the IPRs of of your creation yeah. and so the incentive for, for, for the school to help you out and defend patents and, and, and uh, seek new ones and, and, and find I mean, the framework so you can focus on the idea itself, it's, it's not quite there because they don't own parts of it yeah. and so, so that, that, that's, that's perhaps a change that needs to be made and, and uh, there, is, there are several uh, efforts being done now uh, like KTH has as an innovation center, and they also have uh, Stockholm Innovation Growth, uh, Dupsola, there's one, Chalmers have, they even formed, formed a formal company to, to handle these things. So, so I think it, it's, it's getting there, but, but there's no saying that just because you have an academic background that you have better ideas mm -hmm. or, or, or they're more well thought. Or, so I think it's a, it's a combination of, yeah. of, of being able to either have yourself one leg in the academic world and one outside, or find people that have the traits you're missing. Mm. Because it's also a common mistake, of course, that, that you uh, engage and hire people that are like yourself. Yeah. And then you get very nice conversations, but uh, maybe you won't get a business money that way. Yeah. So it's, it all lies in the mix, I would say. 
So tell me about your project, your startup. Did that come from your your research at KTH, or was it a, a, another idea? Uh, it, it came from both, I would say, and, and uh, as much my my own because I have a background in publishing and digital mm -hmm. publishing, and I did. Uh, a lot of uh, newspaper websites in the uh, early 90s mm -hmm. and so on. And, and uh, there I met a lot of people, one of which was, was a good friend, Tony Hartley, and he had this idea about why is it so difficult to make uh, software that runs on phones. And especially in, in those days, in, in the early 90s, there was this issue with Java and mm -hmm. Java Mobile because it was so different. It was differently implemented, the standard was kind of loosely held, so just because you ran on one phone didn't mean it would run on the other. So uh, Tony had this idea, if you put something on the phone that would behave uh, custom to that platform, but the code you could send to it would be the same. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, it was kind of a write once, run anywhere uh, idea. Uh, but, but this had to be implemented when the phone was manufactured. Mm -hmm. So it was put on 45 million something devices. Yes. However, it was not as successful as big and, and had marketing like, like some had for jobs. So, so uh, we had to go home and rethink. And one of the ideas we had uh, when we were actually on, both on paternity leave <laughs> with, with baby carriages down by the waterfront, and we said, why, don't, why, why couldn't you take the code and, and have it translated and then send it to devices? So the Java device would get the JAR file and, mm -hmm. and the Symbian file would be a sys file for Symbian or a cab file for. Windows Mobile, yeah. because those three operating systems were, that was the big challenge in those yeah. days. And now, you know, there's at least, well, if, you, if you're nice and call, uh, call WebOS a, a candidate, I think there's 11 operating mm. systems altogether. So the problem is wor getting worse, but this was our original idea to build a, a system that would run from one language to many. And we mm. chose C and C++ because it was a rich language, mm. it had a lot of functions. Uh, but then again, it was not a managed language. There's no garbage collection. There's we didn't use threads. We didn't use exceptions. So it was kind of a bare bones mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. so, but we thought that most uh, mobile uh, applications and games could be made this mm -hmm. way. So that was the original idea. And that became mobile sorcery, right? Yes. yes. And, and mobile sorcery. It, it was very hard to say when you were drunk. <laughs> and, and it was hard to spell the URL, so even though we still like it, and, and uh, for, for in Asia uh, there's, there's still a mobile sorcery company, yeah. uh, we, we switched kind of quickly to Mosync. And, mm. and the reason is just that, that we wanted to focus, and the product was called Mosync. Uh, the first product was called Mobile Author, but the underlying system yeah. was called Mosync. And we, we, we couldn't really afford to push several names, so we had mm. to choose one. So we chose the, the one that mm. was uh, shortest, mm. and, and the domain name was free, mm. and so on. So, that's good. Know, that's two good reasons. <laughs> and, and you also open sourced the system, right? Yes, th th that was a bit later on, though, yeah. because at first it was just uh, we just put it out there. Mm. First, we uh, took the binaries and put them out there, and then uh, after a, a few years, we, we started publishing this, the, also the, the source code. For, mm. First, a Google code, code, and then we, we switched to, to GitHub after some while because the, it was rich and there were more yeah. functions and so on. And, and uh, quite quickly, there was a lot of interest, and, and uh, uh, we had very early some code contributions. So, so we, we saw kind of the, the benefits of being open source. Mm -hmm. uh, because, I mean, a lot, of, especially when you talk to, to investors or this Swedish innovation system, they really say you need patents and you need IP and so on. And, you put it out there. So, what, what's the thinking about around yeah. that? Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's, there's, there's like three ways to go about this. Mm. Either you publish your work so nobody else can claim it, mm. or you, uh, or, or you patent it and, and put it under wraps, or you just hide it. Mm. So, for in the beginning, we kind of hid it because it was uh, not so well documented <laughs> in the beginning. So, it, it was kind of. Hidden in, 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 but in blind sight. It was yeah. hidden in the open. Uh, but as we've been working uh, a lot with, with documentation and tutorials and, and, and uh, bringing comments into the code and making it easier to understand, mm -hmm. uh, we've clearly ch chosen the, the publishing route uh, for this. But I mean, it was no easy choice. And it was uh, when we started to get approached by, by uh, 
angels and venture capitalists uh, that uh, that one of them, which is uh, David Axmark, uh, mm -hmm. the, the founder of MySQL, yeah. uh, he said that oh your company it's it's kind of similar to MySQL, but of course about 15 years earlier. So uh, I, I see some good. You also have uh, uh, well you know wild ideas and you have this drive and you want to be uh, open. So so why not take the GPL uh, license, the new public license? Uh, straight off, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and it's it's proven both that it still can be defended in, in some cases, and we got help from the German lawyer who who's done a lot of those defense uh, that where other people have chosen to take the GPL and put it in commercial software yeah. without saying that they did so, and so so it, it can be defended, uh, and and uh, the openness also vouches for it. I mean, we were t well, at the point we were about seven, eight guys in a garage, so if we get run over by a bus, I mean, normally a company would down, but in this case, when, when it's published out there, it's fought a number of times, yeah. and, and a lot of contributions are made. Uh, you can't kill a product mm -hmm. uh, so easily, even if, even if the company perishes. And of course, now we're, we're 20 people, and, and it's, it's even more difficult. But even so, uh, it's, it's a, uh, you could say it's kind of an insurance mm -hmm. for big companies to rely on a technology that it's still around even if we're not. So what is your product currently? I mean, in terms of product, what do you make money on? Oh, your business um, model? The, the, the product, the model. Uh, well, well I, I can begin with the product. Yeah. And, and the product is, is uh, uh, it's, it's basically uh, an, uh, a virtual platform where mm -hmm. it's a uh, software development kit where you can still, st still the idea is to use one code source and be able to Publish to a number of target platforms, and and on top of that, when we, when we were we were in the uh, uh, in the making of of accessing native functions, native uh, UI elements, mm -hmm. and, and, and native GUI, uh, we 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 saw pretty clearly that that we could use also the web container and do mm -hmm. things in there. So so just by exposing this function. We got a lot of benefits, which you normally find in JavaScript frameworks and HTML5 and so on. So, uh, so we built this this um, stable platform, and on top, we allow developers who have not harnessed the, the C and C++ skills mm -hmm. to, to use Mosaic anyway by using this, the skills that they're they're accustomed to, like HTML5, JavaScript, style sheets, SVG, and, and so on. So, so it's kind of a it's a two-handed monster, but it's just it's pretty much one product. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's most for both for the newbies and for the yes, newbies. and, and to make it to, and, and to make it less confusing yeah. for 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 the web developers, we developed a, a uh, kind of a companion application which is called Reload, which allows you to write HTML code uh, on the PC and have it transferred directly to a lot of mobile devices in one go, and they could be uh, any anywhere from iOS. Devices like iPad, iPhone, they can be any Androids, they can be Windows Phone 7 devices, uh, and you can actually either have them on, all on your desk and see them reload at once, or your customer can have one of them in some other part of the world because it's just web technologies yeah, on top. Yeah. And but when, yes, yeah, sir? You have a, a quite a lot of uh, rather, or more, I would say, famous competitors like Titanium Framework and FemGap and so on. So how do you see that competition? Yeah, I mean, I mean, they, they've, uh, they've, many of them have come from the other route. They've mm -hmm. come from the web world, mm -hmm. and, and they made a, a JavaScript framework, and then they're adding functions which allows you to access uh, network APIs and device APIs. So technically, we come from the other way, mm -hmm. where we built this underbody, mm -hmm. and the underbody is also cross-platform. Mm -hmm. So we don't have any plugin architecture where where you would find code specific for iOS or code specific for Android, uh, you just write your, your, your code to access the, uh, let's say the uh, you want to read an NFC tag, mm -hmm. it's just one piece of code and we expose it the same way across the different platforms. So, so technically we're at, uh, we're at an advantage to, to build new stuff and when a new platform comes along, I don't know if it would be uh, perhaps Tyson or perhaps mm -hmm. some other Linux based uh, system. Some say that uh, it will be an Amazon OS, we'll see. <laughs> uh, and uh, th then it's very easy for us to add new operating yeah, systems. Yeah. But in case of how the marketing looks, it, it's, it's fairly similar. So, so 
uh, to us it's good because when we started out uh, this journey we, we told people that code for phones are different on different operating systems. They go, yeah, and, and, and you have to be, be uh, skilled in uh, one of them and you have these native tools and they go, yes. And, and, and uh, going from there, where we actually have first have to explain the problem and then, then in the same sentence, to talk about solution. We can, only, we can talk about the solution only. Yeah. And we don't have that many reasonings now about cross-platform, but it's, it's more bringing web mm -hmm. to apps. Mm -hmm. And the cross-platformness uh, comes. Uh, I would say if we have one competitor that, that has a similar approach to ours, uh, or is, or is uh, we find very savvy, is Marmalade. Okay. We built this very nice uh, gaming platform, mm -hmm. and, and they're also uh, trying out other uh, other areas as well, and they uh, they have a big customer in, in electronic arts as well. Because there must be a huge uh, huge uh, demand for these kind of products right now, when the mobile web is just exploding. Yeah, for, for sure. And, and and funny enough, we get a lot of requests that are non-phone related, like okay. in regards to in-car use, in yeah. regards to set-top boxes. Mm -hmm or embedded systems of, of sorts. We even had some, because in machine to machine, most of the systems are still 8-bit and they yeah. still rely on GSM and so on. But there are a few 32-bit uh, machine to machine systems. And then presto, you can do a lot of the things. So we're not really uh, stranded in only phones, mm -hmm. although phones is a pretty big yeah. area. <laughs> Couple of billion devices, but 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 it's it's possible also to to um, address other yeah. form factors yeah. in a, uh, uh, with the same code base still. So, what's your business model? Well, well, we I mean, to begin with, we started off as a, as a consulting company, yeah. and we did some some pretty major projects. One of which was this uh, blind navigation system for for the city of Stockholm. Okay. Uh, where, where somebody with a smartphone and a headset and a $2,000 step counter uh, could actually navigate the streets on their own without a henchman. But they still would need a cane, they still would need a, a dog because things like a, a, you know... A, trash cans? Yeah, well, right. trash cans, they're actually in the map. Okay. And, and, uh, and uh, stones and, and uh, bicycle racks and, and bus stops. But if somebody has a, a, a lorry with with the um, tailgate down, yeah. or if somebody's just trashed a bike on, on the sidewalk, it's so it's such a dynamic event. Yeah. You can't really plan yeah. for that, so you, you still need it. But but this was this was probably one of the biggest mobile projects in, in, in Scandinavia mm -hmm. at the time. This was from nineteen uh, from two thousand six and onwards, uh, and and uh, we spent about fifteen person years uh, making the client. Because you need the two things. You need to have a wonderful map, and you need to know exactly where you are. And if you have those two things, you can you can build pretty much anything, really. So we started off that way, and and and, and MoSync was was uh, still in its infancy, and we, we created all the APIs necessary to do this service. Mm -hmm. So we kind of we were like a train that laid tracks as we <laughs> went along, and and then as we became more and more feature complete, we addressed more more people's uh, issues and problems and, and I mean that, that's an old saying that we got from David Axmark is mm. first try to solve one problem for one person then find similar people with a similar problem then try to solve one problem more and so on so organically build rather than trying to to please everybody yeah. because if, if we would send out a press release saying we're feature complete I mean it doesn't mean anything but if we would say Aha, we now have NFC support on all major platforms, which we do. Uh, then that's a big thing because then people that have this issue will be interested. Yeah. In so. But but uh, back, if we go back to, the, to, to your question, <laughs> to the business model. So so uh, we have uh, a, a, a number of big companies, not that many, but but who have commercial licenses. But most people uh, are are enjoying the most. Sync uh, platform for free, either as open source, mm -hmm. but there's also an indie version which allows you to, to build closed source applications uh, using the binaries. Although you, you, you can't, uh, you know, uh, take the SDK and uh, build your own stuff uh, that way, because then, then, then you need to follow the GPL regulations. 
but but so you make a bit of money from that. But most of it comes from from training, mm -hmm. uh, from uh, non-recurring engineering. Uh, we have a number of support contracts. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we still have a burn rate because yeah. because it's important for us to 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 work with the tool and make it uh, make it ready for the market. Mm -hmm. So now we just added Windows Phone Seven support in a in a really big way. Uh, and uh, if we had been working with part time with consultancy, part time with this, uh, it, it wouldn't really make sense mm -hmm. because the window of opportunity would probably close on us. So if you say that you have a sort of red hat business model where you, because I mean they have been really successful when it comes to open source, the Linux distribution and taking in money from, from just like you say support and, and uh, training and so on. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, red hat or, or even uh, closer to, to uh, MySQL actually, mm -hmm. because as I understood they never had more than 6,000 paying customers at any given time, but yeah. they had millions and millions yeah. of installations, so they had a, a big community. So our currency uh, is to have a big and, and, uh, and a live community mm -hmm. rather than to, to make the next uh, quarterly report look really good. So, 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 uh, but we have quite patient investors really, and, so, and we're lucky yeah. in, in that case, so we can focus on, on what we need to do really. What do you see is disruptive with the model? Is it that it is open source and... and uh... I mean, the disruptiveness, it, it lies rather in the, the way you, you develop. Mm -hmm. I mean, no, a, a mobile developer is used to... Uh, if, let's say you build an a application with, with a web container. Mm -hmm. So we have some hybrid code, you have some HTML, but some of the functions that you need to write in native. Uh, which means that even if you write HTML, you still have to compile the code. Mm -hmm. And if you're running for two platforms, you have to compile for, for iOS and then uh, maybe you compile for Android. Mm -hmm. And this cycle may be one minute yeah. or one and a half minutes, who knows. And then you test the result, then you go back. We showed this to a number of web developers. They, they say, we're not going to work that this way. This is, mm -hmm. this is not acceptable. Mm -hmm. Because they're not used to write some code, get coffee, write some more code, uh, take a phone call and so on. Because they, they write the code and they want to see the result yeah. instantly. So, so so that's what what, what uh, most you can reload does. It, it presents the, the, the true uh, hybrid app, not only web stuff, but, but also the, the underlying functionality. Because the client has hundreds of APIs mm -hmm. built in already. So, so uh, when you download code to the, to, to the terminals, it just works. And it works all across uh, the different systems. And, and we haven't seen that happen before. Mm -hmm. and, and secondly, when you're happy with the code, you have just produced the MOSIC project and then you can compile it in the MOSIC uh, SDK mm -hmm. only once. Mm -hmm. And then you have the different apps. The yeah, but most of your competitors, they might do two or three of the platforms, not seven or, what is it, was it ten you do? Yeah, well, but, I mean, native APIs, yeah. the, they need to be in place. So mm -hmm. for Java phones, mm -hmm. there's no native mm -hmm. uh, UI really. So, 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 so the, the hybrid support is, is limited mm -hmm. to the modern phones, but a lot of the features still work mm -hmm. uh, on, on uh, legacy phones and, and uh, for our Asian customers. Yeah, I guess and it's really yeah. important for them. So we, we still have a lot of people running, running job out there, mm -hmm. and, and uh, the idea to have C++ code that becomes Java is, is, is pretty interesting. And sometimes our solution brings you faster job code, we get faster byte code than if you would do native because yeah. of, the, of the way uh, the application is built. So sometimes you can actually see it running faster in most of than in other <laughs> which, which it, It's like Windows yeah. running faster on MacBooks than, yeah, than on PCs. Yeah, because uh, I mean, we get this question, okay, but w w what's, what's the cut? Of yeah. course it must be slower and in some cases, yeah, it is slower. But, but if you look at the, if you do something in web, and we can mix web and, and other technologies like OpenGL mm -hmm. pretty much any way we want. So you can have a, a function running in, in native in the same view as two web views. So, mm -hmm. so that you can mix and match. And this makes your application faster than it would be uh, uh, running as a web. Mm -hmm. So faster, slower, but mm -hmm. the cost, it, it depends. Yeah. Yeah. What's your biggest uh, challenge right now? Biggest challenge is is, uh, is is probably spread mm. uh, to to uh, because it's 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 getting quite noisy yeah. <laughs> and when we started out it wasn't that noisy mm. uh, and and uh, we need to to uh, have interviews and we need to to uh, write stuff and and uh, have events for for developers yeah. and so on 
and, and just show what you can do with the chip technology because uh, market wise some of the other players uh, on this market are they're making much more noise than we yeah, are yeah. but we, we you know Swedish tech company we build the stuff we build it they will come and, and, and to some extent it works yeah. I mean we've been downloaded more than about, roughly about 200,000 times mm -hmm. so it's we, we found our way out there but 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 now we're addressing a new market for for web developers and there are probably 10 times as many as the C++ yeah. developers and they don't know about us that mm -hmm. much anymore so it's it's word of mouth and, and social media works pretty fine for us but we have to make it uh, even more serious effort yeah. in that field to, to be successful uh, how many are you working with most think, right now well we're, we're pretty lean so mm -hmm. so uh, out of the 20 uh, I think 16 have programming capabilities yeah. one way or another and seven of us are ours in Cluj in Romania mm -hmm. and uh, this is an inheritance from from our former CEO's uh, old company they have this very nice working team mm -hmm. and uh, we had the benefit of working with them and they are really really good mm -hmm. and, and we started out we thought that oh they can make some sample applications and they can make some features to get applications on the app stores for us while we were busy with the court Mm -hmm. But it proved that, that that was totally the wrong way to go, and they were got increasingly interested in how how things looked under the hood. And now they're, they're just uh, like a solid part of the core mm -hmm. team, and, and we have uh, morning roll calls every morning using uh, Skype and, and mm -hmm. what have you. And yeah, because uh, I mean, it must be different to manage a company in several locations. Yeah, but they're but roughly in the same time zone. Yeah, they're in the same time zone. Uh, they they. Uh, uh, we think they like our jokes. We like their <laughs> jokes, and, and uh, no, but, but they're they're um, very straightforward and, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and honest. I mean, it's, it started out as an idea that, that it would be uh, more uh, economically savvy to have yeah, a team down yeah. there, but but now I think we do it for for other reasons, and, mm -hmm. and the difference is not really that big. Do you think that that your open source approach actually um, recruits? Programmers who feel that it's more fun to work oh, yeah. with open source rather than oh, things yeah. that just disappear, I mean, as you say. I mean, before. if we were a consulting company mm. just straight off mm. and, and we were charging 1200 an hour for services, um, they'd leave mm. probably because the, most of them, and myself included, were, were, were here for other reasons. Of course, I mean, the, the, the journey as such is interesting, but, but, but seeing that, that people out there. Uh, work with our technology anywhere from a, a, a school in, in West Africa to uh, some guys in a garage in, in uh, Seoul, Korea uh, to Brazil, Argentina and, and, and I mean they have their their uh, culture with them and they make their kinds of applications for various reasons and, and most of it is pretty it's a pretty small download it's, it's about 120 megs uh, currently and compare that in the old days you had to download Symbian which was I don't know, five, six, seven, eight, nine CDs. If you have a modem line, that's not possible. Yeah. So for for many parties, it's it's choosing between MoSync and not downloading anything mm -hmm. really. Uh, so so uh, because oh. we we see also a lot of companies uh, like Twitter and Google and so on where this opens. Uh, I mean that that the developers are allowed to open source actually. Really, you know, keeps them in house and not going to other companies. That might say you can get a higher wage. Yeah, yeah. No, no, the, the, because because the, 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 these soft factors like like uh, uh, fame and being able to to interact with other projects and, and uh, uh, also a lot of the social events around the open source space. Uh, that's that's clearly a, one of the reasons why you wouldn't take a just a mm -hmm. regular job anywhere. Uh, what's your future plans? Will you? I mean, I know you have an office in Singapore. Um, will you go somewhere else? I talked to Renan Lund last week at, at the Load Impact and he said that you're probably going to need a, a presence in the US to be, be visible on that market. Do you have any similar plans? Or? Yeah, I mean, clearly the US is, is where a lot of these things are happening and, and the more times we go there for, for visits, for conferences, mm -hmm. for, for talk with, with uh, uh, potential partners, the more convinced we are that, that, that uh, we also need 
uh, some some additional presence mm -hmm. uh, over there. And the shape of form for it is is, is not quite settled, mm -hmm. but but. Uh, uh, we see clearly this need, and saying that, uh, we, we have a gang in Pakistan, okay. <laughs> which is a, a bunch of enthusiasts yeah. who, we, who we know. Uh, they, they've um, uh, wanted to do most of Hackathon, which is taking place now on Saturday, mm -hmm. really, and it's uh, twofold overbooked, Whoa. and it's it's one of the biggest hotels in, in, in the area, so, so it's... So uh, I, I think we, we should we, we shouldn't be, be so quick that we, we only focus on the US. No. Uh, and, and also we have a wonderful presence in, in the UK, uh, a guy who, who is uh, championing our forum. And in Korea we have a joint venture with a Korean company that makes uh, location-based services. So so we're we're a bit spread. However, we can't spread too thin because we're, we're only that few people. But but uh, US is a really good idea. Um, do, you, do you see with with all this international presence and you've been going since two thousand six or? Yeah. yeah. Do you see yourself as a startup still, or that you're becoming a more mature company with a not finished product but somewhat getting there? I mean, I don't know if it's if it's the open sourceness that <laughs> that, that makes it take time, but but it, it's it's um, it does take time. Yeah. And, and uh, the market is also moving quite fast, so, mm -hmm. so uh, if you call it the, I think it's Alice in Wonderland, it's called the Red Queen Syndrome, that mm -hmm. you have to run pretty fast just to keep still. Mm -hmm. And we've been doing that, and, and thanks to when we, when we got uh, help with the financing, so the last um, 18 months we've been able to run at, at a, a proper startup speed. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, in hindsight, perhaps, being a consulting company for for first year years made it take longer time. Yeah. Uh, however, we did get a lot of experiences, and, and it's called drinking your own champagne. <laughs> I heard this a similar expression with dog food, but but we call it drinking your own champagne, it's uh, nice, sir. where you really yeah you really have to try because because making these tools and making apps is not the same thing. Yeah. So so we, we need really need to need, know what what the issues are. So. I think it's yeah. I mean, in one sense, we're we're early stage. I wouldn't say we're a startup mm -hmm. because because we we probably have too much. Uh, we're too experienced, handicapped yeah. to, to have the ha have that um, startup shine really. Uh, but but uh, we're now in a stage where where we we can't sit at the same table anymore. I think it, the limit is about fifteen, where you mm -hmm. can still sit around the same table and discuss. Now now there's always somebody. At the meeting, or somebody at the conference, or, or uh, I'm going to a tomorrow talk, or, or some we have a hackathon on Thursday, or or all these things. So, so uh, we're early, and and we're definitely not pre-product, but in some senses we're we're we're, we're uh, maybe uh, pre-partner in a way, mm -hmm. and we have done a, a fair amount of of, of todo in dipping, but but. Uh, the next uh, couple of months, uh, I think we're, we're going to advance even mm -hmm. in that area. Too. What, one of the mo questions that, that founders and, and startup people are most curious about is, of course, how did you get your financing? How did you get your, your investors on board? So, was that an, an easy project or, or a process, or did you have to go and talk to a lot of people? I think we, we did we did a fair amount of talks, mm -hmm. but it, it but it wasn't it wasn't endless. Mm -hmm. I mean, we weren't like uh, four years, mm -hmm. and nobody wanted us. Uh, that, that wasn't it. But but I think it it was it was about finding uh, a group of people who who either had enough headache to want our aspirin, mm -hmm. or to to uh, understand. Uh, the, the power of the platform yeah. and, and, and so I think we've relied a lot on 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 a really solid based technology mm -hmm. and the, the core of the software was built in early 2006 and mm -hmm. it hasn't changed it's mm -hmm. it's the same but a lot of the the runtimes and, and, and the things necessary to, to to adapt to different devices of course yeah. adapts to it. so so I think that that um, uh, when when uh, Open Ocean or, or, or uh, uh, David's company, uh, yeah, uh, and f kind of found us. I, I think we, we we found each other, and, and I think it was I think it was uh, a combination of, of maybe social skills, and, and also that there was a uh, was a likeness between mm. their company and, and ours. Would you say that it's important to find uh, investors that that have um, 
similar mindset and a similar interest also to be being with you for the long run and not just start saying we want our money money back <laughs> yeah no they, they haven't they haven't said that yet <laughs> uh, we'll get the phone call any day uh, no i mean it, it's of course if they they've also been entrepreneurs they've been in the stage uh, they've seen uh, similar endeavors i think they they would intrinsically have more patience mm -hmm. than than just a regular uh, startup and and uh, to begin with they had also a lot of ideas of, of what to do i mean in terms of licensing that was easy because uh, mr axmark he he was uh, i mean he knew every open source license in and out there was and he quickly said oh we should do that and then this and put these in the header file so so we didn't really have to investigate that mm -hmm. uh, so much and same thing with, with uh, the importance of support, importance of, of documentation. I mean, my You got more than money from them. You got yeah, a lot of advice and support. Because I mean, my it, it wasn't really probably not the best database software around, mm -hmm. but they had the best support. Yeah. They had the best turnaround. They had the best uh, non-recurring engineering. They had excellent documentation. Uh, I know that uh, Monty answered. Uh, I think it was roughly 10,000 support emails mm -hmm. uh, in a short time period, all by himself. Even when they were out hiking, <laughs> he had his laptop up and, and, and mm -hmm. did some support replies in the tent. So, so that's, that, so, that's truly so, yeah, being dedicated. So, so, so that, 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 that's, that's an inspiration, okay. really. Yeah. Um, what do, you, do you have any lessons you have learned during these years that you can share with, with other entrepreneurs? Well, I mean, it's... It's it's uh, a lot about sticking to it really and and uh, being very uh, imaginative and and and, uh, and coming up with new ideas all the time. It's it's a blessing, but it's also a curse. Mm -hmm. So so it's like it's like halfway between these, uh, and also uh, choosing the right people is mm -hmm. is so important because the two three first people you, you uh, gang up with, or even more important than two or three first people you employ, mm. they set the culture. Mm. And, and uh, we have a culture that we, which is, which is uh, fairly open, and, uh, and uh, we, we, anybody can speak to anybody, we, we keep it as flat as it could be, so, so anybody can come up to, to me and say, hey, this is not the way it's supposed to be, uh, and that's fine, and, and uh, the other way around, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Uh, and and uh, the second tier of people you you, you uh, involve, uh, they will adapt to this. Yeah. So so th th that's th that's very important. Mm. Uh, what do you think a, a big company can? They, do they have to, anything to learn from your your experience and your going through this process? If you're a really big company, uh, people are more are probably more dedicated to specific tasks, and mm. and, and, and the structure is more set. Um, so, so I think what we do on a daily basis that I think is good is we get to do a lot of different things. So, so perhaps uh, uh, we, if you could introduce job rotation, mm -hmm. like like a UI person could go and be a backend person for a while or learn that, so you can get a feeling for each other's yeah. uh, work. That, that, that do you think you mean if in a small startup or, or I mean you're not so small anyway but, but compared to a big company that you need to be more a generalist that you need to be able to handle more different tasks than yeah, a I mean, big company? I mean, I mean not everybody yeah. I mean, but, but you need to have these people that, that pick up things mm -hmm. that, that fall between mm -hmm. uh, chairs or fall mm -hmm. between tables uh, and, and also we have the Fridays, which, mm. which are uh, open and you can do pretty much anything you want. Oh, you have uh, the Google Fridays. Yeah, we have the Google Fridays. <laughs> and and uh, sometimes it, it spills over to the other days too. <laughs> but we, we try to keep it that way. And, and uh, uh, this is interesting because even though you can do pretty much anything you want, most people still do something in relation to Mosuk. Yeah. And I, I don't believe that anybody told them that it should be related to the work or, or it should be similar to what you do, but, but more fun. Uh, but but uh, the tendency is that, that, that the things we, we, we create in the rest of the working week spills over, but then you get those little extra touches, like, like when Niklas, he, he uh, thought it was sad that Windows Phone 7 didn't have OpenGL, 
So we, we pretty much mapped uh, OpenGL to XNA, which is the graphic library in uh, Windows Phone. So now we have uh, OpenGL people could pretty much run their stuff on, on Windows Phone without any extra programming. And this uh, was done, well, in, in a weekend and then <laughs> on a Friday and, and it, was, it was separated from, from its normal tasks, but uh, it was very interesting. Yeah. And um, I think many... It made your product better. Yeah, and many game developers out yeah. there will, 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 will see this. Yeah, so that's fun. So, do you have any? What do you think about having a, starting a startup in Sweden? Do you think there's a good climate here, or um, would you think have, have succeeded better somewhere else? I mean, if you look at from, from a pure financial mm -hmm. point of view, uh, m many say that that you can put the Swedish krona uh, and say, oh, it's worth one one million. And in the U.S., you would just put the dollar sign in, and, and the company would be worth mm. uh, six, seven times more. And uh, I mean that may be true, but at the same thing, at the same time, everything costs more to do. Uh, also, so so uh, it's it's like living in Stockholm or living in London. The rent is higher yeah. and, and yeah. salary is higher. But but for me, it's it's also about. Uh, I mean, I, I I live out in the archipelago in, in, on an island in a summer cottage and and. When I leave work, I go home uh, before I sit down on the computer again. I have a few hours of bliss and, and uh, chat with the kids, and, and uh, uh, you can see the horses out the window. So, so, it's, so it's, it's trying to get uh, work to be kind of a, a balanced part of the life without screwing everything else up. So, so in order to have a social life, uh, if you don't socialize only with people that, that, that have same interest and, and for me, as I mentioned in the beginning, it's a lot about music and the and, um, music scene here is, 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 is pretty nice and there's uh, many fine acts and many places to play. So I would say it's, for, for life, Sweden is, is excellent, but if you're only in for the money, if you're going to do a startup, uh, live a rat race three years and then do something else, uh, I would probably do it elsewhere. I'd probably go to to uh, to the UK or to to even to France, mm -hmm. uh, Japan, uh, US, you name it. Maybe the East Coast actually, rather than the West Coast, because yeah. a lot of things are happening in New York. Yeah. Well, that was an excellent final words. I think. I uh, think. Thank you, Alex, for this chat, um, and see you next week. Bye bye.